Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. I regret to report that both our Jedi Order and the Republic have fallen, with the dark shadow of the Empire rising to take their place. This message is a warning and a reminder for any surviving Jedi. Trust in the Force. They've outgrown their age of rebellion, dull the Empire's edge. Defeated Imperial generals and the Pirate Queen's dredge. They've been soldiers and scoundrels, what's there left to be? How about Las Acolytes looking for their force and destiny? There's a seer, hermit, investigator, and teacher better watch your back. A reviver ring's gonna reach you. Will this team find the light or will darkness win the day? Find out with the heroes of the hardy and wave. Previously on Heroes of the Hydean Way, Skip, Koba, and Hillary fell in with a group of Helshari dissenters after the Guardians captured Kesh. Pathrin the leader asked for their aid, encouraged as he was by their efforts among his people. While Koba and Hillary became wrapped up in the Sithari struggles, Skip kept focus on their missing Trandoshan. Not only could Kesh be an asset to the cause, but she was their friend. The three quietly consulted the Holocron on the matter and went back and forth with each other and Pathrin. Finally, a plan was assembled. But would all of the pieces fall into place? Find out on this week's episode, The Heroes Take the Stage. Welcome to Heroes of the Hydean Way. This is a Star Wars actual play podcast, and we're playing in Fantasy Flight Games' Force and Destiny system, using the Chronicles of the Gatekeeper adventure as developed by Tim Cox and Max Brook. This is Act 1, Episode 7, and I'm Ben, the GM for this adventure. Hello there! My name is Skip Gobi, and I am a Kalaran Seeker Hermit. This is my friend Gudge. <laughs> I've been told lately that I'm a little reckless, but I like to think that I make up for it with my enthusiasm. What do you think, Kesh? That's one word for it. I'm Kesh, the Trindoshan Mystic Seer, and I've never once in my life been called obstinate. <laughs> right, Hillary? I dare say that's because you're usually called obstinate all the time. <laughs> so once you throw the word once in there, yeah, it's a fair statement. I am Lord Hillary al -Oric. Technically, Lord High Lord, but they don't seem to like that. I am the leader of the Flying al -Orics, and if you want to get mechanical about it, I guess I'm a consular teacher, whatever that means. Now, the one I'm really wondering about is Koba. I'm just trying to figure out how Kesh got free from the Guardians. This is just another puzzle that I, Koba, the Doug Sentinel investigator, will have to unravel if I want to get off this Force Forsaken Rock. To learn more about our heroes, we get one to ask another question. And this time, it is Skip's turn. Hey, uh, Koba? Hmm. <laughs> that was good enough. Uh, <laughs> Have okay. you just become Solid Snake since I've been gone? <laughs> <laughs> I was always Solid Snake. <laughs> <laughs> and he fits so tidily in a box. It just kind of just kind of depends on the day. <laughs> and how my throat's feeling. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. So... I have been doing a little bit of thinking about what you said about how some of this isn't really our business or our fight. And, and, and then one thought led to another, and then I realized, I don't know what Koba's favorite color is. Best transition ever. Hey. Only shades of gray. I confess, I didn't think that was where it was going. <laughs> Takes a lot to catch me off guard, Skip. Right, yeah, that was the question, the favorite color. Sorry. Some days yeah. I think maybe there's more to you than meets the eye. Anyway, color. Well, used to be green. Of course, that was when I was young. You see, Malastare is a jungle world. There's lots of green everywhere, especially for a kid like me, young Copa, growing up in the boonies. 
I mean, green's nice. I'm, 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 I'm green. That was before the Clone Wars came to Malastare. <laughs> the Republic. Wait, how old are you? The, um... 40-something, probably. <laughs> We're just, like, not letting Brandon answer this question. <laughs> so so Skip really is our protagonist. <laughs> yes, yeah, Skip yeah. is the only one of us under We're 40. just all old people. I've been serious every time I've said that. <laughs> I know, but I was like, oh, we could work it around. Like, no, there's really basically yeah. no way. It's just, it's Skip. Anyway. The Separatists, the Republic. They both trampled my home planet just the same. And by the end, it didn't really matter who won. And that's even accepting the fact that the Republic became the Empire just thereafter. But still, even after I left Malastare to find my fortune, as it were, to seek out a life of excitement and adventure, the kind of thing that you'd see in those old war hollows with that announcer guy who had the, the voice you know, you know the one. I don't. <laughs> first place I landed, the first uh, small agency is probably not the right word, but it was this <laughs> uh, this old Togruta who had his little investigative business, mostly surveillance. He needed somebody to help him around. He was well past his prime, and his partner had just been forcibly retired. Anyway, his sign was neon green, so it felt kind of, you know, homey. Felt like a good sign, I thought. Literally a good sign. (laughs) So, your favorite color used to be green? Used to be green. Now it's neon green. It is not neon green. (laughs) <laughs> See, here's the thing about <laughs> about Togruta. Can't handle it. <laughs> like many species in the galaxy, they're awful susceptible to blasters. So one day I come back to the office and I find him <laughs> shot all pieces. Not literal pieces, because blaster bolts don't really do that, but, you know, he was very dead. And that sign, oh, that sign just kind of flickered at me. It had been flickering for several weeks, because we needed to get it fixed. Didn't have the credits, but... It was only then when it seemed to take on some kind of metaphorical weight. And that's why my color's, my favorite color's not green anymore. Okay, but... What is your favorite color? Because that was whole like a really long way of that telling me what it's not. Chartreuse. <laughs> <laughs> That's also a green. Our destiny pool for this session consists of four light side points and one dark side point. Woohoo! Because I'm, I'm going evil in jail while you all <laughs> are messing around. I think I've heard that song. It's just like the criminal justice system. They pull you in, make you worse. The camera picks up, and you can see this curved wooden and woven branch ceiling with these beautiful single branch ribs going up to the top. The camera slowly pivots down, and you can see that this is actually a pretty large room. Pivots down a little more. And you can see the top of a podium. And you can see, like, lights on the other side of the podium. Like, you can see the shelves on it and the top ridge of Hillary's head. As Hillary steps up onto the small step ladder that they put in front of the podium, as Hillary takes the podium at the front of this large, large gathering, where you can see many, many tables, each seated with nine people. You've got four people to a side per table, and one on the far side so that they can look up at the stage, and no one at the stage side of the table. Then just down in front, you've got 
one table off to the right that has pretty much no one sitting in it, just one Sathari in relatively heavy armor, it looks like, at least heavy for a Sathari, sitting in the rightmost of three chairs. And then off to the left side, sitting a little bit closer towards the people who are there, a group of six people. Some of the heroes can recognize one of the young Satharis sitting off to the far left-hand side. All eyes in this gathering turn towards Hillary as they take the podium. Just for setting, I'm on a stage, there's a podium. Yep. I'm going to stand in front of it because it's probably the same height as me. It's taller. (laughs) I'm going to stand in front of it because it's probably taller than me. And... Hillary will step up. He doesn't introduce himself. He doesn't really have any particular... He doesn't look like he's looking at anyone. He takes up a pose of formal recitation, hands clasped in front of him, and he's wearing his his very nice vest. And he looks very kind of proper. And I have practiced this, but it's still going to be terrible because I can't word. So, beg pardon. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair koalas, where we lay our scene, from ancient grudge break neath new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean, from forth the fated nests of these two clans, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured, piteously schemed plans doth with their loss bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love, and the continuance of their family's rage, which but their children's end could not remove, is now the figment traffic of your mind's stage, to which if you with patient hearts attend, lest the moment missed, shall dare try and mend. He goes off into probably a good fifteen minutes of this story, telling the tale of Two lovers, destined to be apart, desperate to be together, and the tragic and familiar end. And he bows. Would you like a roll? I can do that. Yeah, it kind of sounds like there should be a roll to that. I kind of like the idea of this being... A roll? It screams serve charm to me. Screams charm, you say? Yeah, totes charm. <laughs> I feel like he is working his way through a specific avenue. You said electric? No, because you have to go down to electric avenue. And we're definitely suspended. This is true. I really want this to work, so do you guys mind if I flip a destiny point? (laughs) What will we do with only three light side points, Leslie? I'm taking half of the ones I contributed. We'll have to talk about this at your next employee review. (laughs) funny story you have no power over me alright I am going to upgrade this once and I am going to make this one red one purple one setback I still want to know how he managed to uh, collapse all of Romeo and Juliet into 15 minutes it's bullet points but he did it successfully (laughs) Actually, after the you didn't hear, but after the um, the poem ends, he he breaks into a freestyle rap. <laughs> so besides that success, oh, that's 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 the success and two advantage, by the way. Thank you. And then to prove that I am oddly on the fearless side. Okay, so one thing at the end of this performance, you do notice that Catherine, who had been at the leftmost of the head table, Catherine has now departed as the audience erupts in clapping and clicking. I was going to say, what does the sound of feathers clapping? Well, they've got hands, so I'm figuring like actual hand clapping. So just traditional hand clapping noises. (laughs) Yeah. But then also, they'd be doing like yelling and happy noises, so like clicking. And whistling. Screeching. A little bit of that too. And yeah, you find that Patherine Helshar has vacated their seat. Kind of looks like no one else has noticed other than the three of you. And yeah, the assembled tables that are there are clapping and have really dug what 
Hillary is done. Was the plan that the rest of us were also going to be involved in some way in a performance, or was it just Hillary? I thought that the rest of you were set up, at least Skip and Gudge were set up for doing a performance. Do tricks, I thought. Oh, that's right. Uh, so, with a flourish, Hillary will bow. Thank you. Thank you for lending me your oral attention. So don't seem to have yours. Now, if you would please join me in welcoming my friend, Skip Gobi and the fantastic Gudge. Clapping. Yay. Side bow. Dismounts the chair. He actually, he's he's going to hop off the, the stage with a little bit of a flourish and kind of frantically flap for Skip to, you know, get on the stage. Uh, S- Skip will definitely do as, as bidden very sort of enthusiastically I, I hate to say it but Skip will very enthusiastically skip onto the stage I like it and will you know sort of with as much of a flourish as Skip can with their gangly you know mannerisms show off Gudge a little bit who flutters and explain All right, hi, hi everyone uh, so, this is Gudge. Gudge is a very rare, uh, star fray, and we are here to show you some of the really neat things that Gudge can do. And so, <laughs> Skip just has, like, a pocket full of, like, little snacks and things, and we'll just sort of instruct Gudge to do some, like, kind of, like, floaty flips and things, and nothing that is particularly amazing, but Gudge can't really do anything that is particularly amazing. It is just I have no idea what this would even be. Um, Actually, I think that this would be like an average survival (laughs) check. Okay, cool. I can handle that. I will toss in a setback due to distractions. Well, that is just, you know, Skip's existence. Okay. I was meaning all the birds, but okay, sure. No, 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 it's perfect. <laughs> I got three advantage. Um, that's an advantage. Oh. I got three successes, sorry. Yes, I got three successes. <laughs> Skip's really impressive. So you've actually been able to get Gudge to do some fairly impressive tricks for them. Especially considering... The stage itself was not really prepared for anything. (laughs) At the end of that performance, how are you wanting to sort of finish it? Considering it is a very successful one, and all of the Sathari who are there are looking at Gudge and thinking, wow, this is a really cool-looking flying animal that we've never seen anything like that before. Like, Daddy, Daddy, I want one! birds and that sort of stuff, <laughs> but they don't really have anything like a sarfray that's like half shark, half ray. So oh, awesome. be- because the point of this was to get everyone established as being here, Skip will think they're helping by and thank you. Thank you so much. We we're, we're here all night. And if you have any particular questions about how fascinating Gudge is, you can direct them to my manager. Right over there. His name is Koba. Bye. Best thing ever. And we'll just flounce off the stage. There, now we've all been seen. <laughs> Koba quietly puts away the poem he was going to read. What? Since he's now no. a manager. No, no. Are you kidding? If you had a poem in your hand, Hillary is shoving you at that stage. Yeah, and now there's actually like limelight actually pointed at. Koba. <laughs> as soon as my manager over there like goes and follows Skip's hand over to Koba. There's like that really vast moment of silence <laughs> as the audience stares at him expectantly and he's not really prepared yet because he was still muttering <clears throat> In faith, I do not love thee with mine eyes, for they in thee a thousand errors note. 
But tis my heart that loves what they despise, who, in despite of you, is pleased to dote. Nor are mine ears with thy tongue's tune delighted, nor tender feeling to base touches prone, nor taste, nor smell, desire to be invited to any sensual feast with thee alone. But my five cunning, nor my five ranks in perception, can dissuade one foolish heart from serving thee, who leaves unswayed the likeness of a dug, thy proud heart's slave and vassal wretch to be. Only my plague thus far I count my gain, that she that makes me sin awards me pain. Thank you. I didn't write that. That was Shakespeare. I was, I was about to say, was that also, what, what did I say? Manalu Rape Chic? Probably. I thought it was on topic. Um, Hillary will do do the two finger whistle because I mean it's not his baby, but it's his teammate, and he will support like. Yeah. And he'll if there's if there's anyone within elbow jogging range, Hillary will jog elbows and be like, "Did you see that? That was brilliant! I." It's so formal and so dark, and yet it expressed the passion hidden within his soul. I knew there was more to him. Oh, I'll have okay. to talk about literature with him next. Can I get a average with one setback charm check? <laughs> Though I kind of would accept deception. You sure can get a check. Yeah, what if I? What if Koba's never felt love before? Well, I was more going on, okay, well, <laughs> actually, I was kind of going the whole Sophie route, but okay. No, I'm, I, I'm joking. I think charm is a, yeah, it's not, a, it's not a role I want to make, but I think it's the appropriate one. Yeah. I, did I say a boost? You said a setback. Okay. I'm actually meaning both. Okay. Uh, I have those two advantage from mine too, that never got applied. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, a green and a boost, and two purples. Uh, Koba ends up with one success and two threat. All right. Everyone draws up to their feet, and, like, this is the third thing that they've seen that is just, wow. Patherin Helshar was absolutely right to get these people here. These outsiders were absolutely amazing, and it's good being the GM, because even if I don't have dark set points, I will use this. One thing that you do notice, and I'm kind of using the two threat for this, is at the front left table, you will see a person turning, looking at the rest of that table, and seeing Patherin already gone. As they're clapping, they're going to duck out of everyone's sight lines and go between the table and the stage and out the side door. It's at that point where you also see a guardian come in and talk to the armored Sathari at the front right table. Sort of chirp in their ear as the person is clapping at the performance that Koba has done. Are these things we see or yes. just things that are happening? Okay. No, they're things that you see. I, I'm figuring that we knew that there's going, there's like going to be a series of performances. Hillary is going to walk over to the East Branch Mushroom Farmers Children's Choir and see if, if there's anything he can do to help them get ready for their performance, if he needs to help them move the podium or something. Moving the podium is about the only thing left because, like, in behind, as the Kobu is up front, they were bringing up the bleacher-type setup getting the four sections of that set in as these... I'm going to go with six in the back and bring out, like, bleachers and that sort of stuff so that they aren't distracting from everything. Standard backstage work. And, yeah, you roll the podium off, and there's the three of you standing off stage left. So the kids take the stage? Mm-hmm. I figure cast a meaningful glance between the three of us. And I'm going to let say that Koba was going to be in charge of the timing, since this seems like something a retrieval specialist would probably know. 
Fair enough. Then Koba is going to keep his eye on the guardian who has arrived, and um, once it seems like most eyes are on the children's choir, he'll make a motion for, for us to move out. So in that case... That was nice of me to label it that way. Could I get a group hard stealth check? Who's got the best stealth? Uh, well, I bring three agility. And that's I have, it. I have three agility and one rank. I also have three agility and one rank. So I guess it kind of doesn't matter. Do you want to make the roll run or should I? You can. And a boost for each of the others. And a boost because most people are distracted. Okay. Um, and difficulty was... Three purple. We've got a ton of destiny points, so I think I'm going to flip one of them. Like all of them. Yep. All five. Oh, we can flip all of them? <laughs> Does Cash just appear next to us I mean, now? not all at once, but... <laughs> yeah, you, nice don't, you don't know that rule that if you have... How did I get here? If you ever have nine light side points in the pool <laughs> at one time, you can just win the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter what campaign it is. You just just uh, Darth Vader has a uh, has a hard cack somewhere. Yeah, a coffin and, uh, outfit. Yeah. yeah, Darth Vader has a change of heart, becomes a good guy. No, no, no. Whew, that's more like twelve light side points. I was like, come on. Hey, hey, mine actually happened. Wowie, <laughs> zowie. All right, Dad Gum. So Koba takes the lead and. <laughs> Using the fact that the uh, children's choir is providing a distraction, which sounds really terrible out of context. <laughs> well, at least I guess it sounds really terrible in a certain amount of context, but not the correct amount of context. We've got on that stealth roll three successes and four advantage. Perfect. So you're able to sneak out and sneak down to the area just outside the Guardian Station that you had been tipped off. Cash was going to be in. And outside, you can see two groups of Sathari, each about eh, half dozen. One of them is headed up by Patherin, and the other one is the younger Sathari that had left just at the same time that someone was showing up from the Guardians. Both of them, like, you can see them, they've got their deros out, and as you get in close, sneaking, I am thinking that you can just start coming into where you can hear them yelling at each other. Who do you know? She isn't good enough for you. Do you know she is? And the two groups are sort of circling each other in the courtyard outside the guardian house. They're making a fairly big ruckus. You can see that the Hellshar group all is dressed pretty similarly. Like, the Patherin has all of these tufts and whatnot of armor and, like, this semi-kilt thing. And fairly militaristic in their look. And the rest of them are looking, like, less experienced, but still right ready to go. And all of them in the Hellshar is entirely in this orange with brown trim. Most of them have a sort of red plumage, also with this white shock around their beaks. They're dressed up in this ivory-colored armor with orange sort of armored plates on it as the two groups are just slowly circling each other. Every now and then you hear end butt of Adira bounce off of the wooden courtyard. Yelling back and forth is still happening. The two at the front look to be getting close to blows, but maybe not quite yet. The last thing that you see is one Sathari sitting off to the side, just hand over the left side of their face, just sort of shaking their beak at these people in the middle of their courtyard. Why? Why? Is this just supposed to be the distraction that we'd arranged? Is that are the import of this? Sounds like it to me. It's like half the import of it, yes. Okay. I confess I'm not getting the other half, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling like Hillary might have hit closer to home than he realized. 
Oh. She's not good enough for you? Yeah, there's something going on here. But that's not why we're here. Hillary will tear himself away from the drama and focus on our mission. Is anybody coming out of the guard hut? You do see two guardians that had poked their head out, and then one with a cup of beverage coming out, and they're both leaning up against near the front door of the guardhouse. The door itself leaning completely open, and they're leaning up against the wall a little bit, like a couple feet away from the door, just sort of looking and watching at these two groups circling each other. So there's two people at the door? Yes. Okay. All right. Skip has definitely been thoroughly distracted by watching this go down. Huh. Skip is distracted by the throwdown going down. Yes. <laughs> nice. So so if if Hillary like goes to keep going, Skip is just like the head slightly cocked, just like watching this. Skip. Huh? I think we're gonna try and get you inside. You're gonna find us a way to get the rest of us in. Huh? Oh. Oh, right, right. Oh. Right. Hillary, I need uh you just distract one of those guards at the door. Hillary salutes and hides behind a bush and finds something to throw. <laughs> You're throwing something to distract the two guards? Mm -hmm. One or two. I'm, I'm being a distraction. You're being a distraction to the minging group of the guards. Gotcha. Well, You're throwing something. It's going to be, well, in this case... It's going to be an average check. So two purple. Okay, I don't want to throw it at them. Nope. And that's what the I would reason like... why it's two purple instead of one. Yeah, what I'd like there to be is they're they're leaning against like they've got like a little message board out front. Mm-hmm. You know, freestanding message board and so Yeah. Like where you'd find quests. Yeah. You could say that. I basically kind of want to throw something that smacks off the side of it that they're not on, just something to make a loud noise to kind of like, wait, what was that? Yeah, that is absolutely eh, totally just average. Right. A two purple check on account of your beating their perception. Sounds good to me. Until I roll. Can I aim? Yeah, I'll let you aim. I'll even let you take a deep breath. <laughs> yeah, so the crosshair st stops wavering. <laughs> All right, Hillary. You yep. did this before with the with the flappers. You can do this again. You're not that out of practice. Just don't hold the breath. Ooh. I am not that out of practice. So Hillary has um, he's found like a stick, which is nice because it will not only make a clattering sound when it collides, but there's like, it, he throws it end over end. So there's a bit of a sound and it, it clatters. So it doesn't sound like, you know, somebody's throwing things at them. It sounds like something fell. Ah. Um, I did get a threat uh, with my one yellow, two green, one blue, two purple, uh, three success and a threat. So however you'd like to, I'm figuring me. that before it bounces off this message board, it comes amazingly close to one of their heads that you were about to beam them. And then just the motion of the stick caused that part to rise up and then hit right behind to startle them. So the two of them are like, whoa, 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 what, what, what? They start looking around completely distracted from the door. And it's like they can hear something for a second clattering and then the little bit of it rolling or something. And then, yeah. All right. Absolutely distracted. But for a second, they thought it was going to hit. thus causing one strain. I think that's fair because I was wincing the entire time you were describing that. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, no, I don't want to hit them. Exactly. <laughs> They're both distracted now? Yes. Okay. The minion group is now distracted. Have they moved or are they just looking? They have moved, and this being Quillas, one's looking over the edge, seeing if they can see something on the platform below. 
the other one's looking around seeing like, well, it sounded like something was rolling for a bit, so is it still here? So they may not be physically too, too far from there, but they're definitely looking 100% distracted. So uh, Skip could reasonably kind of dive through and get inside. Is that the, the hope here? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Honestly, if they're both distracted, okay. I think we probably just all try to go. Yeah. Fair enough. Honestly, I'm going to go with there was enough success there that I'm just going to go with the three of you are able to get into the front door. Oh, red. Okay, that went well. That went better than I thought. Yeah, so I guess we're inside. Now you're just inside the front door. There's the, I don't know what else it's called, sergeant's desk there, and there isn't anyone behind it. On the other hand, at this particular point, I am going to flip to the other side of the whole thing and bring up the one person who's been remarkably silent. <laughs> what? Were you having a nice nap, darling? No, just, you know, catch it up on emails, uh, <laughs> you know, things like that. I, I wish I was doing a talent show. <laughs> Aww. So uh, exactly where are we picking up with Cash? Exactly where we left off? Yeah, pretty much where we left off. Okay. So you wanna, do you want to kind of recap the scene for everybody's benefit? Or do you want me to do my best job? Why don't you do your best? Okay, so we see Cash, a very battered and bruised looking Trindoshan. She is armed. She's not in a cell. In fact, she uh, we can see an open cell back into a room that she has just left as she was stepping well, into the hallway after the the Ace of the Sathari Guardian had run into the room after her. And the thing I think when you cut me off last time where we were stopping is her goal was to actually try to close the door and see if she could lock him in. <laughs> right, yes. Is is he still functional or is he on the floor? No, he's still very functional. And in, in fact, I uh, actually forget is is so Cash I think still has binder cuffs around one one wrist, doesn't yes. she? Yep, and the other end's just like, you know, flapping around. So her immediate goal will be to try to close those doors and find a way to, like, bar them or something to ensure that that Sathari Guardian is at least not a problem for the moment. That sounds like... It feels like an average athletics check as you're, like, trying to slam the door shut and turn the handle because it is to the armory, but it's also generally an exterior closed type thing. Okay. What's the difficulty on it? It is two purple. Two purple. Yep. This is, uh, oh no, I actually got success at this time. It's not how things have been going for Cash. Uh, I got three successes and two threat as Cash is going to force those doors closed and uh, just secure them with the first thing she can find. It might be, uh oh. And now, one other thing I'll remind you of, Ben, is that Guardian did sound the alarm before running in after me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What do you want to spend the two threat on? Well, okay, so yeah, you've got two threat. Is this the point where I just use it for comedy? I kind of like that idea. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how the heck to do it for comedy. Just, you know, uh, use it for something exciting <laughs> i uh i i don't i don't know what this would uh, exactly how this this might not be the spend of the two threat but what i'm thinking about in this scene of its comedy is having that moment where like cash just close the door like grab some like nearby uh dero or something sticks it in between like the door handles breathes a sigh of relief and then like a slug thrower goes off like blowing out the window to beside her head or something like that <laughs> she realizes that she didn't you know disarm this individual <laughs> That is actually pretty close to what I was thinking. Okay. Instead of it shattering a window, because, well, we've sort of established that this guardhouse, at least the prison section of the guardhouse, doesn't seem to actually have glass in the windows. Oh, you're right. There are, there are bars. Yep. I am thinking that it uh, impacts a sack that was on the ground, a counterbalance sack of some variety, and mm -hmm. showers cash. With a fine powder. Okay. I, I see where you're going with this. <laughs> Cash blinks, trying to like get some of the powder out of her eyes as it's just going everywhere. Uh, we hear a nice Trindoshan sneeze, <laughs> as it, which just shoots more powder up onto her side. <laughs> She's going to try to uh, very ungracefully 
leave this uh, this section and figure out where she is in this facility. As Hillary, Skip, and Koba get into the guardhouse, you hear this crack of a slug thrower go off, and then this sneeze. <laughs> like, you can hear it down a hallway, and you're not quite sure how far down the hallway, but you can also sort of see the end of a fog at the base level come out of that hallway. Little particulate matter in the air coming out of the hallway. You can also hear the claw sounds of the Sathari of, let's call it three Sathari, jumping up from their desks in the back and starting to make their way towards the prison cells. Uh, let's go find Kesh. With expediency, I, I, I yep. believe, would be the best plan. What is that? Oh no, Kesh's ghost. Cause... <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, could this be the point where we see, they start to see a silhouette emerging from the fog like powder? There are three Aquilas guards standing there. They've got their Duro out. Well, they've got their Duro in one hand, they've got their slug throwers in the other hands, and they're looking at this filled hallway of powder that's in the air. It's just sort of hanging there. It's not falling or anything. It just sort of seems to be somehow stuck there. You've got three cells on the right-hand side that are closed. That's where visual range sort of ends. You've got flickering light in behind, and coming forward, you've got the silhouette of a Trandoshan in the powder. As you can see, these three guards raising their slug throwers and getting ready to shoot at the silhouette. Um, mm, three guards, huh? Yes. In what range? They would be at short range to you. Okay. Yeah, Koba's just gonna, like, fly in there throwing punches. Okay, you're gonna brawl them? Yep. All right. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? As somebody who's dived into many battles... <laughs> I'll... I'll lose my other vibro rang. Skip fires into <laughs> yeah. melee and actually tranks both you and one next yeah. to you. <laughs> I like great. it. That's an acceptable risk. <laughs> I don't think Ren is just shocking. So. Unlike some people. It's because Ren has never played a character with a gun before. <laughs> That's not the point. Don't take this away from me. <laughs> <laughs> let, let Brandon just rub that salt All right, in. They do have one melee defense. So it will be Two purple in one setback. Right. Which seems to be a theme. Yep. Sure does. Okay, um, so Koba probably like springs into the air, launching off of his you know strong arms, and then balls up those same fists, which are wearing sap gloves. Of course they are. I mean, you gotta be able to like knock people out if you're on the beat or something. Okay. So I, I'm definitely using a light side point. This is a great idea. I mean... Oh, it's going to get better. I'm okay with it. Let's do it. Hey! You got success. Oh, yeah! <laughs> okay, that is kind of funny. Yeah, so uh, one success on that. So Koba, one of Koba's uh, punches connects with one of these guys and does five damage. All right, so there you are engaged, and you're finding that they... No, these guys were just sitting at their desk. They didn't have a chance to put their armor on. So I'm going to go with that actually connects pretty handily with them and almost knocking one of them out. Yeah, and for what like, it's worth, Koba's nice. not like trying to inflict lethal damage here. I know they're minions, so Thank it doesn't you. actually make any difference mechanically, but... Taking out versus killing, like... As listeners will harken back to last episode, yeah, there is still the difference of your intent. Are you wanting to yeah. kill them? Like They're taken out of the fight, sure, but are you killing them or is you like breaking bones or knocking them cold? Yeah. Because weirdly enough, this was the second episode in a row where that discussion's come up. It's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, funny that. Speaking of, <laughs> uh, does Kesh notice her companions? Or Koba jumping in, or these guards? Like, what, what am I seeing here among the flower? 
I'm thinking that you can kind of see the silhouette of these three Sathari, and then all of a sudden something bounces off the ceiling and flings into one of them on the right-hand side. Okay. What's my range from them? At this point, it is short range. Short range. Okay. Well, <clears throat> this is a terrible idea, so I must do it because I, I have to do it in this way, is Kesh, she remembers being a crack shot back in the day. So she's going to draw the item from her belt that helped her escape. She's going to take aim at one of the Safari, that, the one that wasn't hit by the, uh, the flying silhouette, and is going to throw the item in question at the other one. As Koba hears a familiar sound through the air, as a viper ring flies out of the flower and towards the Sathari. <laughs> this is the best thing that possibly could have happened, to be quite honest with you. There is still going to be, on account of the amount of powder that's in the air, and you're like throwing at silhouettes. It, yep. The difficulty on this is going to be one red and two setback. <laughs> okay. I'm going to double aim, and then can I argue a boost just for rule of cool? I mean, I'm yeah, throwing I can a go viper ring out of a sure. silhouette, throwing it, you know. Yeah. Towards in Koba's direction, this is this is fine. This is this is great. What could possibly? Happen? I'm gonna flip a light side point as well. That gives me a yellow, three boost versus a red and two setback. Because Kesh used to have a higher agility when she was younger, but now it's sadly only a one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> two successes and a triumph. <laughs> 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 oh, um, that's awesome uh, Brandon what's the base damage on a Vibrorang uh, the base damage on a Vibrorang is uh, plus two okay so it's brawn plus two I believe so yeah that would be okay. brawn plus two I'm looking at my sheet which ha just has the my damage but um, yeah should should be brawn plus two so that'll be seven damage to the minion group. And I will spend the triumph to take another minion out. <laughs> so I think might be two of them total, or is it just one total? If you're using the triumph to take out a minion. Yes. Even though there is no advantage to this roll. Because I, 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 can, I can describe this. This is okay. cool enough that I'm just sort of figuring. Cash is done is throw the vibro ring. It hits the one on the right with enough of a curl and enough of a bounce to it that it smacks the one in the middle. The two of them go down and lands in like the shoulder of the one that Koba just punched. And as that one crumples, Koba is able to grab the vibro ring in hand or foot. Yeah, I think we have like the shot where that third guy is sort of looking startled as Koba's able to like, reach and grab it. And, yeah, the three Hathari are now... You've got nice, like, low cover on the ground for this entire hallway because, yeah, the Hathari are completely covering the hallway now. And as Kesh comes forward, they are completely white with flour. We get another big Trindoshan sneeze, <laughs> sending more of it <laughs> up in the air. Okay, well, I'll admit. I was worried I thought... until you sneezed. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll admit, Koba. Those things look stupid, but they're surprisingly helpful. You could have just asked if you want to throw it, Kesh. <laughs> you in one piece? <sighs> More or less. <sighs> Do you know the quickest way out of here? We know a way out of here. <laughs> then that'll have to do. From where we're standing, can we see other prisoners? Uh, yes, you can. So, Kesh, in their long walkout, actually passed about... Well, there were four more prisoner cells with people in them. Plus the two that Kesh had dealt with earlier. Okay, so, th so there are more prisoners here. Yes, there are four more prisoners on the way up. Well, 
There's no reason why I should be the only one to benefit from a prison break. Are, uh, are there keys? Are there keys among the guards? Yes, there are keys among these guards. Cash is going to retrieve those and start opening up some cells. To which they'll do the one arm on the, on like Cash's cyber arm, like opera cyber arm above the elbow and another one on their good shoulder. It's like, thank you. And then duck out as a sneeze. <sighs> just this powder just seems to be everywhere. And yeah, it's repeated three more times. I don't know what I would have done if they had taken me to trial. Yes, yes, just get going. And gather. As they're leaving, Hillary is saying, Remember, there's more of you than there are of him. Stronger together. They're just kind of encouraging the work work together. Hillary is staying just at, like since everybody else is okay with doing the, the the cell clearing he's not getting in the middle of, he's staying suspiciously clear of the dust <laughs> under the premise of keeping an eye out and um sharing these words with everyone that goes past him because he really wants them to work together to 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 better their their situation also he wants to be clean i guess i have a final question for y'all Okay. Now that the four of you are together, even though you've got one absolutely caked in flour, are the four of you just going to head off to your lodgings, or are you going to do something else? I have a question for Kesh. Yes? What did they do with you? Interrogations? Anything like that? N no, they knocked me out and threw me in a cell. We should probably... We, we need to be able to lay low and... We need to start asking the right questions around here. <laughs> uh, all right, we can get out of here before more show up. Kova says as he surreptitiously pitches that data pad somewhere. All right. Uh, maybe jams it under one of the unconscious guards. Okay, fair enough. Whereabouts are you heading after you get out the door? And are you attempting to fling those two guards over the side? What? I mean, we're, not, we're not killing anybody. Well, I guess they wouldn't die. They'd just oh, glide. Well, yeah, as long as they're not, as long as they're still conscious. So sure. Yes, they can glide. It's a common thing among Safari. Yeah. Um, what's going on with the 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 fight out front? At this point, Patherin and the Tumorous Sathari, yeah, they both look like they're a bit more bloodied. You can see that both of their blades have a little bit of blood on them, but... I'll flip a light side point to have the two guards actually in the middle of that, and they are completely involved. Okay, yeah, I can go with that. I can totally go with that. Are you trying to be any sort of stealthy uh, trying to get out of the guardhouse? I would think so. I, I think ideally. I mean, I, I contribute nothing to stealth, by the way. It was more along the lines of, does Patherin know that you have escaped there or not? Oh, and okay. no, gotcha. they are oblivious to that. <clears throat> well, I would like to ask one question as we're going by. Yep. The, um, the, the soul on the outside mm -hmm. standing there holding their face going, why, why? Are they still there? The way that looks currently is you've still got the six on each side. You've got the Tumrus and the Hellshar, and you've got the Guardians, one getting in the beak of Patherin, one getting in the beak of the Tumrus guy, mm -hmm. shoving them apart. And the one who is on the outside is now in the middle, just giving a piece of their mind to both of them rather loudly. Ripping him a new one? Yeah, both of them. Nice. In that case, Hillary will pause a moment watching this fight and watching this person standing in the middle, and he'll just smile and say, that's the way to do this. And then keep walking. Hillary approves of somebody dealing it out equally to both sides. We are... Our next steps are we need to find 
who is going to fill the vacuum when Markov is removed forcibly from office? We're kingmakers now? Well, reeve makers at least. We're more in the business of... Well, dealing with others like us. Markov is corrupted. Markov needs to be stopped. And even his absence can cause more harm. I, I mean, if we get rid of the bad guy who's doing all the bad stuff, then the, the good people will take over, right? That's how it works, right? No. No, that's a naive way of thinking. <sighs> we we need to find them first, Skip. But who are we to decide who are the good people? Thank you for listening to this episode of Heroes of the Hydean Way. You can find show updates on Twitter at The Hydean Way, and you can find me, Ben, on Twitter at Deuterium Ice. You can find me, Ren, at Atomic Firebird on the Twitter land, or my other podcast, Fast Times DND, on Twitter. Same place. Woo. You can find me, Christine, and much more train action at 12th Ninth. That's 1 2 TH Night with a K. I also have two D&D 5e actual play podcasts. The Glass Dagger can be found at The Glass Dagger on Twitter. And Omen's Call can be found at Omen's Call Pod on Twitter. You can find me at Leslet GS, where I have significantly fewer trains, but motorcycles and trucks instead. I am moonlighting periodically on Flight Risk, not Force Majeure, as much as I love them, and Silhouette Zero. <laughs> uh, that's uh, proprietary knowledge yet and that's stuff I don't know come talk to me I like talking to folk if you couldn't tell and I'm Brandon at blue of the kin on twitter I have both trains and other podcasts <laughs> <laughs> final raptors dang it most notably a star trek Adventures actual play where Christine also is. Yay! Has her character been eaten by an undersea monster? You'll probably be able to find out the answer by the time this episode comes out. Actually, you'll definitely be able to know the answer by the time this episode comes out. Because it's you're going to find be able to find the answer on Tuesday. Uh, relative to when I'm recording this. So very soon. Anyway. That is at Endeavor Show. That's E-N-D-E-A-V-O-U-R Show. And we are all at thehydeanway.com where you can find previous episodes. You can find more episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Plus, you can help us out by rating, reviewing, and subscribing. We're also on Facebook as Heroes of the Hydean Way. You can holocom us at heroes at thehydeanway.com. If you like what we do and want to support the show, you can find us at patreon.com slash the Hydean way. Or you can toss a cred to your podcaster at ko-fi.com slash the Hydean way. I'm just trying to figure out how Cash got free from the Guardians. Are you in cahoots? I'm speaking to you in your minds. <laughs> that Shush. doesn't make me feel better. This is this is called a flashback. This is yes. no or the a flash effect. forward. This is a, 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 an or out an of time alternate experience. reality. Time has no meaning. This is just Stop another puzzle. Being so literal. I could just listen to Koba boy about things for like an hour. I, I was just thinking about how when I when when we're done with our little intros there, there's gonna be like three or four seconds of saxophone music to close out. <laughs> before I the also question. love that Christine picked up what I was doing there, but the rest of you just <laughs> lost it. I know, right? Oh, no, I knew what you were doing. I just couldn't think of a word. Wait, it's it's on your it's, character sheet. It's my, yeah. It's your emotional weakness. Yeah. But mine is literally love and hate. 
Yeah. So. <laughs> Literally. Well, it could be I, like... I, uh, I did my strength and my weakness, technically. So. You did. And I'm like, I, well, people say I'm loving, but maybe I'm a little hateful. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I, I, I didn't do my strength. I only got my weakness. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, so. but hear me out. My weakness is defiance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Mine's not an adjective. It's a statement. Because that was whole like a really long way of that telling me what it's not. Chartreuse. <laughs> <laughs> That's also a green. <clears throat> Thank you for listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are ten and a half minutes now into the recording, and we just got past the question. <laughs> okay, but I yeah, haven't told you why it's like chartreuse. Five... You <laughs> cannot like, blame you me for this. He could keep going. I asked the simplest color one can ever ask. I, I, I no, I don't. I don't blame you at all. There were there were a couple times there where cash was where it was a little bit more cab. I would have answered for my character and tried to cut it off. <laughs> okay. I feel like this, this is one of those things like Skip asks Koba questions and Kesh gets really fed up and walks away before things even get started. And Hillary just gets comfortable. <laughs> I am I waiting for the day. I disturbance in the force. It's like they're screwing around instead of coming to rescue me. <laughs> <laughs> I am waiting for the day that the rest of the group has to distract Koba for some reason. <laughs> It'll be the easiest thing yeah, like, in the like world. If, like if Kesh is about to go do something that Koba thinks that she shouldn't do, <laughs> and Kesh just needs an opening to leave without him noticing. Uh, hey, hey, Skip, uh, just just talk to him about anything. Oh, Ask him yeah. about the weather. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no. Koba, uh, so I was wondering. Um, I know that you think I'm a little ridiculous. So uh, what do you think I should do? To uh, be less so. Just give me all the life advice that you have. Follow your perhaps destiny. Perhaps we should have this conversation <laughs> at a later date. Answer, answer uh, the call to adventure. <laughs> on a ship. <laughs> so In uh, our own surroundings. <laughs> he does? He, he does? <laughs> I can word. <laughs> do I hear birds in the background? I hate everything. Yes, you do. It's not my bird. It's birds outside my window. Oh. They're just hanging out on my... Well, I mean, yeah. it's it's thematically appropriate, but I just wanted to make sure that, like, I wasn't hearing one at my house, because that would have been really loud. But there's, like, a certain time of day when just, like, this whole batch of starlings just... I can see them. They're just sitting on the ceiling, having a, a giant pile of chittering nonsense. <laughs> They'll go away eventually, but they've gotten in the middle of so many podcast recording sessions. I'm mad at them. Why do birds suddenly appear? Because it's rain. Because they, they want me <laughs> to have to do hours of re-records for fast times. Uh, okay, I forget what I was saying because you asked me about birds. Sorry. <laughs> but my five cunning, nor my five senses can dissuade. Cunning is not the word. <laughs> I also don't have five cunning. <laughs> I didn't think so. I was wondering. <laughs> My brain took a powder. Did Ren remember to um, support themselves? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. I, I, know. Wrote, I wrote the note it's in weird, the right? document. It's there, so I will remember to do it. I'm sorry. It was one of those moments where I was listening to you talk, and I was listening to Christine talk, and then I'm like, Time has passed. What just happened? <laughs> uh, you can find me at Les. Oh my goodness! <gasps> I love him. Yes, please. 